Raja Kuduri just left Intel. Is this good news or bad news? Well, let's talk about it on your boot sequence. So, Raja dropped the GPU Kuduri. Before we talk about the future of his GPUs, let's back up and see what he did before. We'll start with when AMD bought ATI. Raja was already working at ATI, and after the acquisition of ATI by AMD, he became the CTO of their graphics division. So what were the top GPUs at the time? 2007. That's when the Radeon HD 2000 series came out. Its competition was the GeForce 8 series. Raja had been working for five years as director of advanced tech at ATI, and at this point, it's safe to say that he had a hand in the HD 2000 series. So who won, AMD or Nvidia? Well, the GeForce 8800 GTS was generally considered faster than the HD 2900 XT with better overall performance and power efficiency. They did trade blows, however, but the GTS had a leg up. Then AMD released the HD 3000 series and the HD 3800 took the crown of GPUs. That's a W for Raja. 2008 to 2009. AMD has the HD 4000 series at this point and Nvidia the GTX 200 series. They traded blows, releasing faster GPUs one after the other, but Nvidia ended up on top with the GTX 285. The 4890 from AMD was actually a better value offering though, so dubs and L's for Raja. At this point, Raja left AMD for a position at Apple and his projects continued to roll out. Don't forget, it takes years to create an architecture. Whatever followed was part of Raja's plan. 2010 to 2011. That's where things started to take a slight turn. The GTX 500 series from Nvidia beat out the HD 6000 series from AMD. Total victory with power and performance. That's the HD 6970 versus the GTX 580. In 2012, we got more of the same with Nvidia's GTX 680 beating the AMD HD 7970 in power, performance, and price. AMD did release a gigahertz edition, but it didn't help that much. 2013 to 2015. Raja's back, and uh, you know what? It started great for AMD. Not only was their 200 series really good, I had a 290X, it was actually a way better value than the GTX 700 series from Nvidia. Problem is, Nvidia responded and quickly. They slashed the price of the uh, GTX 780, introduced a more powerful GPU, the GTX 780 Ti, and beat AMD in the high end. The mid range GPUs, though, were still trading blows, but after that, the RX 300 series from AMD was just a reskin of the 200, and well, we got the Fury models. Remember those with the HBM memory? In theory, it was a great idea, but the GTX 900 series was always faster at the same price ranges. I mean, we got the legendary 3.5 gig 970 and the 980 Ti. So yeah, Nvidia W again. At this point, under Raja, AMD abandoned the high-end market and focused only on the mid-range with Raja's creations, the first one of which was the Polaris architecture. The legendary RX 480 was born and then reskinned a couple of times for years until 2019. Raja actually left AMD in late 2017 and was hired at Intel in early 2018, leaving the red team with his baby, Navi. Navi 1X, or the RX 5000 series, was actually a great mid to low end GPU lineup. It was competitive against the 2000 series uh, from Nvidia, but it did fall short with no ray tracing support or no high end models, really. I'd say that's both an L and a W for Raja here. Ever since, AMD has been changing and improving the RDNA architecture that Raja left behind. So Raja actually has a pretty rocky track record. Some W's and some pretty fat L's. So what about with Intel? Well, it was a mess. In 2018, they promised GPUs for 2020 and nothing came in the desktop market until, well, mid to late 2022. And that's all under Raja's leadership. The Arc series are a great GPU lineup in my opinion. They just need to be ironed out. But what about the future? Well, Pat Gelsinger is in, Raja is out. Coincidence? 
who knows. Intel recently killed their XE HPC Rialto Bridge GPU, which was supposed to succeed the uh, hugely popular Ponte Vecchio, so they won't have a new data center GPU until 2025. They removed the XELP line for laptops and will now use XELPG. But then it leaves us with XE HPG, which is the XE that we know now. Arc, Battle Mage, Celestial, and Druid. Well, like I said earlier, Raj's work still isn't all out. Battle Mage and maybe Celestial will be some of his work, but that's if Intel doesn't axe the uh, Arc division completely. So will they? Well. I think that just like David Wang took over Raj's work and made it a whole lot better to fight Nvidia at the top end with the RX 6000 series, it's up to Intel to hire somebody to do the same for the blue team. I don't think that Intel can really ax ARC right now. They've stated many times over that it wasn't in their plans, but we'll probably know if the ARC series as a whole is a failure the moment that Battle Mage is released. I would compare Alchemist to the RX 400 series, Battle Mage to the RX 5000 series, and it's up to Intel to bring us an RX 6000 series moment. All in all, I think that it's a good thing that Raja Kuduri is out. The more recent history of his work shows that he isn't really cut out for high octane gaming GPUs. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. As for Raja's future, he's currently a technical advisor at Makuta Visuals, a VFX firm, and he apparently is going to create his own company centered around generative AI for gaming, media, and entertainment. In any case, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you maybe want a video that is uh, the entire history of uh, AMD versus Nvidia, that could be cool. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.